Hi, welcome to this GCSE English Revision video which looks at the poem Late Winter Months by John Uruvur. This is the next video in a series analysing the poems from the AQA Spec B pre-release booklet. John Uruvur was born in Iceland in 1917 and at an early age was fostered. This means that he was looked after by people who were not his natural parents. Winters in Iceland are freezing with temperatures dropping way below zero during the day. Iceland also experiences less daylight which results in long periods of darkness during the winter season. Urbur clearly values the memories he has of his family, as you would expect from someone who has experienced a traumatic childhood. Iceland lies just south of the Arctic Circle in the North Atlantic Ocean. Traditionally, its economy has been reliant on the agricultural and fishing industries. In recent years, however, Iceland has developed industries in technology and finance, which, despite a financial crisis in 2008, has seen it become a very wealthy country with the fourth highest GDP in the world. Poetry has always been an important part of Icelandic culture. We're all aware that days are shorter in the winter, but in Iceland the effect is quite dramatic, with some winter days having just a few hours of sunlight. This can be explained by the Earth's tilt. Because the Earth rotates on an axis of 23.5 degrees, this means that in winter months the Arctic Circle leans away from the sun and spends most of its time shielded from the sun's light. The further north you travel, the less daylight there is in the winter. One of the themes of the poem is this cold winter darkness experienced by Icelanders and their impatience for the warmer seasons. The focus for this poem is the winter conditions, the elements, the waiting for spring, the lack of food. We'll look at the poem's feelings about winter and about his family, particularly in the light of the event he describes in the poem about his foster father going missing. The poem's message will be discussed and will summarise the main features of language and structure to refer to in your exam. As ever, cultural references will be mentioned when relevant throughout the poem. So, what is it like in winter in Iceland? Well, we gather from the poem that time passes incredibly slowly. The poet describes the long, milkless midwinter days. Notice the alliteration here through the M sound, which exaggerates the feeling of time ticking slowly by. Also, evenings long as eternity uses a simile to express how long it, the winter season seems to last. There is a lack of food revealed by two phrases in the poem. First, Rotting fish symbolises a lack of fresh food to eat, which is almost ironic considering that the poet lives near the sea. Also, the word milkless mentioned above suggests that winter is not nutritious at all and that they struggle to find food to keep them going. Winter is also presented as boring, as there is nothing happening. The boats indoors shows that everything closes down in winter and they seem to just sit out till spring. Of course, the winter is freezing cold and this appears in the poem too. Cold feet makes the reader think of freezing evenings spent struggling to get warm and the reference to frozen orlock shows that the extreme cold stops things from working properly. Icelanders then long for springtime. The poet explains how he waited impatiently for good weather and fresh fish. You get a sense of the frustration here at the seemingly endless winter months as they dream for warm weather and a decent meal. The poet's feelings in each stanza change as the poem progresses. In stanza one, as we've already mentioned, there is the feeling of being trapped in winter and the impatience for spring with boats indoors, evenings long as eternity itself, and the fact he waited impatiently. In stanza two, this changes to a concerned, worried tone when his foster father did not return from his brave fishing, fit, fishing trip to find food. The poet looked with fear at the horizon. There is the short, powerful truth in the phrase, it did not come, referring to the fact that the boat never came back. And then there is the menacing description of the weather. Thick darkness and storm sound suggests that trouble is brewing or that something bad has happened. Luckily, his foster father does come back, and the tone in stanzas three to five changes to happy and relieved. There is the reassurance in a soft, warm hand conveying protection and safety, and the poem ends with much more positive language. The sun glistens, suggests spring is coming, and that winter is ending, so in other words, the cold and the danger has passed to be replaced by happiness and warmth. Finally, there's the phrase, happiness in a poor man's house, which reveals what the poet values most, not money, but family. So, this is part of the poem's message, that families are paramount importance. The poet was fearful of the loss of his foster father, and it shows how important his family was to him by his relief at his return. Remember, of course, that Urbur was fostered. To have lost a family member twice would have been incomprehensible. The poem is also about the power of memories. There are lots of little details and bits of description in the poem which echo the way we remember our past. He is also using these memories to remind himself how important his foster family is to him. There are lots of features of language and structure to draw upon for your exam. First, the poet's use of negative language, rotten fish and little cod, emphasise the lack of food. 
It did not come, and tears on a pillow, and fell asleep alone, all highlight his fear of abandonment and of being lonely again. He uses alliteration to emphasise tone, milkless midwinter to convey monotony or boredom. Looked with fear at frozen orlocks highlights how scared he is when his foster father doesn't return. And the sibilance of sun glistened on silver haddock scales promotes a much more positive tone at the end. There are further effective uses of figurative language. First, the metaphor, dusk became thick darkness and storm sounds, helps us to picture the dangerous weather approaching on the horizon and helps us to feel the tension and fear inside of him. There is personification used to describe water with the simple song of the water's flow, which helps us to hear the sounds of the water trickling. And finally, there's the simile, evenings long as eternity, which gives the impression of the endless, cold, dark winters that Icelanders seem to have to endure. The poem is written in free verse, which makes it more autobiographical or like a story, because there is no rhythm or rhyme scheme. And it also allows the poet to play with the line layout, and this lets him isolate particularly negative words or images on their own to emphasise them. Unusually, the poem is written in second person. It's addressing himself, perhaps as an aid to memory, to remind himself of the importance of his own family. And there's the repetition of, and do you remember, as he seems to be forcing himself to remember, perhaps as a form of catharsis. There is the suggestion that these memories are reassuring to him in adult life. There are many little bits of description which build up into a series of images. They are all simple, but they help create an icy, lonely tone, especially in the first half of the poem. The word and is used repeatedly to link many of these images together. This makes the pace urgent, especially when his foster father does not return. It may also reflect how memories seem to flood back to mind all at once. The last point to refer to is the layout of the poem. If you turn it on its side, the poem's lines look like hanging icicles, so even the shape of this poem conveys the cold of the winter in Iceland. And that concludes this summary of late winter months. Please carry on looking at the Portraits of School YouTube channel for more helpful videos and don't forget to tell us what you think from time to time. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.